everybody, it's time for the world famous AEW Dynamite Report from beautiful Los Angeles, California. Quack, quack. What? I don't know. I thought we needed sound effects for the wacky radio show. This ain't wacky radio. This is top 40s. Oh, I'm sorry. I top thought was, 40 I thought hit. it was rock. Album where he ended rock. Hangman Page and John Moxley had a banger, as they call it. They banged each other senseless. It's banging everywhere. Violence and hatred. And then uh, Hangman Page hit the buckshot and and uh, pretended to knock him out. Pretended? Well, he didn't really knock him out, but they sold it like he was knocked out. And uh, Does John get his vacation now? No, he doesn't. Uh. But, uh, man, Hangman... He looks so sad that it came to this. I was <laughs> mad, but I didn't want to crises. knock him out. Yeah, Man. this anxious millennial uh, caveman or whatever he is, cowboy. Cowboy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, man. he's the living embodiment of what Pro Wrestling Illustrated and the old wrestling magazines would do to Ricky Steamboat. There would be nothing as you're watching that would like lead you to believe this, but because they're kayfabing these stories, he was always in crisis. Like there was always something dramatic happening, tearing up inside of him. Like that is Hangman Page, and there are times where I have not loved his journey or his path and how they've used him, and I'm not all in on this anxious millennial cowboy. But then again, I'm an old man. But it is interesting to watch the development of him and the fact that that crowd, regardless of what you think about him, loves him. And I'm not saying, I've said this before, I don't know if he's completely bulletproof, but for a large majority of that AEW fan base, man, he'll never be able to do any wrong, ever. Like how Puffin Zen goes, come on, he's a babyface. That's what babyfaces do. That is not... You know who else is a baby face? John Moxley. And he didn't do that. He ridiculed the guy for being soft. (laughs) It's a fight. Yeah. Then we had uh, the return of Adam Coles we talked about. He's back. And he's going to be going after everybody in the back. We had the acclaimed and daddy ass. They claim they're going to receive their stars on the Hollywood Walk of Fame on Friday. (laughs) Is that right? That's what they said. The man theater or whatnot. Listen, I like these guys and all, but of all the wrestlers, they got there first. What? I don't buy it. I think it's BS. Well, Vince is on there. I think, I think they're. I think they're pretending. That's what I think. Yeah. Then we had uh, uh, Jungle Jack Perry, which I wish. Oh. I wish my name was Jack, because I sound like a Jungle Jack right now. Action Jack. Or was it Jack Action? That's what you could be. Ian Hook faced uh, Big Ass Bill Moriarty. (laughs) Or no, Big Ass Bill. What's his last name? (laughs) uh, Morrissey. Morrissey, that's right. W. Morrissey. And uh, and Lee Moriarty. And these people love this team. These handsome young men. Big Moriarty? They they hit old... uh, It built to one spot, which was Hook hitting Big Ass Bill with a t-bone and the place goes nuts and then uh old jungle jack tapped out lee moriarty and they got the win finally i've been i've been begging for them to do something with hook they finally have what the jungle hook team you think needs to stay together that's what they called today jungle hook yes they uh screwed it up team name should be hook man or no hook boy right jungle boy Hook Boy. That's the name of this team. Hook Boy. But, no, they couldn't do it. And then we add uh, Takeshita comes down to the ring. We'll talk about this in detail tonight. MJF interrupted and, uh, and did a promo. And holy smokes. I went on the board last night, and the top thread was this one guy who lost it about MJF. He's so sick of this guy. He's over this whole MJF thing. He wants him to lose the title and go away forever. My God. And then the thread's like huge. MJF has junked the shark. Sick of this MJF. I was like, wow. So, anyway, people, they, uh, they got mad. Well, I don't know if it's good upset. or bad, actually. 
Sure yeah, in the long run, it'll be good. Now, it was a seven-minute promo when they wanted that match good? No. Uh, I think some of the, you know, the racial aspect has been played up way too much, I thought, you know, it, it, as far as that aspect of MJF. But it does fall under the category of cheap heat. And there are times he is so he is a really smart guy and he's very creative and when he does the Don Rickles one speed thing and people again sometimes people are all into it and he really gets them but last night they weren't and they didn't like what he was doing but in the long run this is what he does so again it could have been better it could have been shorter absolutely did Takeshita look strong look Aubrey's pushing him away. You know, that's something the announcers should have said was if he goes after, she's trying to keep him away because she doesn't want to see him get hurt. She's got a match coming up. We don't even know why this guy's music hit and he was able to stroll out here and he's talking about fines. Like, I thought the announcers, instead of giggling along sometimes, really should have drove home why Takeshita was made to be impotent in the moment. Because if he did put hands on Max, then his match would be out or something could happen where he would not be able to compete because that part was not explained at all. That was very wwe S. Well, yeah, the I obvious question is, that. you know, I, I was talking to Dave about this last night, and he goes, it was a good thing that Takeshi didn't back down. I was like, he did. He got out of the ring. He's like, ah, well, you know, Aubrey got him out of the ring. <laughs> like, They, didn't, they one, didn't drive that home. One referee got him out of the ring. You know how many times I've seen two guys want to fight and 50 referees can't separate them? You're, and you're then right. the obvious right, question but... is, here's the obvious question. Why did Aubrey get the guy who was going to have a match out of the ring and not the rando that came in to cut a promo? But that's in your... She should have got MJF out of the ring. Wrong. That's when the announcers should actually try to then explain the situation to try to make sense out of a situation that really doesn't make sense. Because in what other sport, what other realm, would as you're doing what you're doing, somebody's music hits as you're ready for a match that strolls down and now is going to cut, not only insult you, but then cut a 10-minute promo on you. So that was something that, it shouldn't have happened anyway. I think there was a way to probably do that segment around each other and not in the middle of Takeshita coming out. But that's the, what they decided to do. I just, again, it didn't it didn't hit for me. It didn't work for me. But ultimately, MJF is going to be just fine. All the people saying that they hate him and want the belt off of him. I think they'll probably recover from that. And then, I mean, how many people are really even going to remember that? Because after the match that Takeshita and Danielson had, I mean, the hell with it. This guy here says, he's the champ. They make time for him. No, they didn't. In storyline, they didn't give him any time on the show. He had to barge in on someone else's match. That's the thing. And that's, you know, sometimes when people run out for saves, I don't want to hear their music hit. You know what I'm saying? Like, there are little things that you can do that just helps to condition, I think, a little bit better. And that was very, again, that was a very WWE thing to do with the music hits. He comes out now. He's just interrupting a match ad nauseum for no reason. Nobody trying to wrap him up. Nobody trying to get to him. Nobody trying to do anything. Just Aubrey out there looking like a goof with Takeshita, unfortunately. We had Danielson beating Takeshita. This match was awesome. Awesome match. Regal stretch finish. Takeshita went out. No Don Callis. Nowhere to be seen in this segment right here. Great match, though. And then we had it, talked about Jamie Hayter and Britt Baker against Soraya and Tony Storm. Ended up with uh, uh, Sheeta coming out. She throws a stick into the ring when both Tony Storm and Britt Baker are down. The idea is she threw it in for Tony, but Britt got it. And Britt hits Tony, and Hayter hits her with the Hater aid and wins. Sheeta's shocked, allegedly. And I don't buy it. I, uh, yeah. She did it on purpose. Yeah, I think she did it on purpose there. <laughs> it'll, it'll choke you up. I mean, it's a type Just of so thing that really sick I am. It's, uh, that's the, the cough I also that, that he on. had when he, when he found out that segment was over and Mercedes Monet would not be there. Now everybody's going to be calling the hospital after they heard that cough. <laughs> had the Jericho Appreciation Society out and, uh, Next next week, they're going to do... Uh, I'm surprised you just didn't reach your hands out, put them on the television or on the computer screen at that point, and their outfit didn't cure you of all your illnesses. Ricky Starks and Action Andretti came out, and uh, Ricky Starks has challenged Hager. 
Hager vows, I'm going to slap your face off your face. This is an old one for the kids. Whoever, whoever wrote the report this week wrote, Seemingly quoting Charlie Kelly from It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. See, there's no. kids. That's what happens with the kids. He's, the he's, kids don't know no come more. Come on. He was quoting Owen Hart. I, mean, I kicked your leg out of your God. leg. That's what the young people do. Which next I just thing reviewed saying, a week ago, by the way. Yeah, next thing you're going to be saying is the best of seven. That one they had was better than Magnum and Nikita. And we all know that would be silly. You Kids need to learn your, uh, your wrestling history a lot better. By the way, this person wants to know anything in the reports of Tony and Shad looking to buy WWE with a partner. Well, Barron's had a story that listed them as potential suitors, but I'm surprised they didn't mention me and Dave and Dwayne <laughs> while they were at it. I'm sure a lot of people want to buy it. We had the Elite against the Death Triangle, best of seven for the trio's titles in a ladder match, and uh, Sprint. But everything they did looked awesome. Yeah. And uh, it was a fantastic match. And at the end of the day, uh, Omega hit the one-winged angel on poor Phoenix, who always takes this move off high places, this poor bloke. And then Pac tried the black arrow. Omega got the knees up. And then Omega climbed up very dramatically, got the belt, and they won. They are the new trios champions. Like, as far as, like, match quality, this is one of the best Dynamites ever. thought it was a really fun show. And, uh... Yeah. And you know what? Let's look. I busted your balls there about the best of seven. I'm obviously partial to Nikita Koloff and Magnum TA, but it was completely different. You know, JCP was a red hot company. There was a lot of emotional buildup. There was a emotional storyline uh, that was built up. There were roadblocks Magnum had to jump through and his family being brought into it. And there was a lot of drama and that was completely different than this one. And this is one of those times, even though everybody's going to be tribal and nobody likes who's in the middle on something like this. But, you know, two things can be true. The Godfather did not have a lot of incredible effects. You know, if it would have come along a lot later on as, you know, other movies. Long story short, because you can have two great things. And I don't think you have to say one was better than the other, but I think something you said last night or this morning with Dave is absolutely true, and that is the fact that this was all seven of these were on basic cable that people are probably going to be go be able to go back to forever to go back and watch. I mean, it was incredible. And the moves, Phoenix, again, there's a lot of talent in that match, but Ray Phoenix is crazy and if ray phoenix was almost anywhere else he would be somebody's world champion he would he would arguably be mine if i had a promotion so an incredible athletic spectacle put on by all six of those guys and i gotta be honest i love the nba kind of overlay throughout the whole thing so i did get a kick out of that person goes no one caring for booker and benoit dude that was a good series but it was not in the stratosphere of this that was for look and, and that was really so Booker so Booker could also again that was everything had different missions and that was to get Booker over as a singles guy and see if he was going to be a dude and ultimately yes that was the case but it was nothing like what we saw last night and we'll be couple of weeks. right back Wrestling Observer Live but did you know that in January WWE presents the Royal Rumble on the show will be what is being called a Pitch black match. Why, you ask? Well, Mountain Dew apparently has a drink called Mountain Dew Pitch Black. And they got a lot of money. If it's all blacked out and nothing happens, we're actually the winners because, you know, we don't have to actually watch it. Jared, put a black thing on the screen here. It's It would be like if the match was like this for 10 minutes, and all you heard was, oh, ow, boom. Oh. No, Mike, stop it. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.